It's a beautiful day. The sun is out. The skies are blue. The birds are chirping. The baby sleeping. There's not much wind and I'm out in the garden. What a perfect day. Last week, I promised you a continuation of my propagation series of videos. And in this episode, I'm thinking of starting to work on my pollination game and maybe start working on seeds. So if you stick around, let's go harvest some seeds. Now, this episode is mainly about introducing you to my upcoming series of propagation videos and it would be about seed propagation and leaf propagation. I would have two additional series running apart from Let's Plant because as you know, they have their own pace, seeds grow at their own pace, leaf propagations grow at their own pace. And the goal is to be able to independently document them away from the Let's Plant regular schedule. Now with that said, if you don't want to miss out on any updates from either propagation series, then make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube and if you're on Facebook, make sure to like and follow my page. Now let's move on. I like keeping my mix simple, that way it would be a lot easy for me to uh, source the ingredients and to replicate the mix that I made. And in this case, I'm using a mixture of regular garden soil. I just got this from some part of my garden. Doesn't matter how big the particles are yet because we're going to sieve that in the next step. And to mix with that, I have coarse sand and in my local gardening center I find this labeled as propagating sand so this is perfect for my needs what you're after is coarse sand and you do not want it to be too fine because very fine particle sand means that they clump when they get wet and you do not want that with your succulents and on the far left is a tub of scoria and I'm not going to mix this into my seedling batch this is mainly just going to be filler, that way I do not have to use too much of my soil mix. And another note regarding soil, you might be tempted to go with a premium mix like this one. This is a no-go, the premium mix tend to have slow-release fertilizers already packed in. And you do not want to fertilize seedlings yet. And it's for that exact reason why I recommend just grabbing a cheap bag of potting mix or just pulling from the garden. So the next step here is to sift the soil, removing all of the larger particles. But at the same time, like the coarse sand, you do not want the finer particles to stay. Because like with sand, once they get wet, they clump and it would not allow water to flow through. And that would be a rot risk. In order to do that, I'm using one of my trays. It has these little slots in here, you could see. And all it takes is just for me to pour the soil here and shake, use this as a sieve. Now that we have the sifted soil, it's time to mix it with the coarse sand. And like I said, I keep my mix simple, so I'm going to do a one is to one sand to soil. And I like it being very easy, so I'm not going to be very precise. I'm just going to use this scoop. So for each scoop of soil that I pick up with this, I'm going to pick up a scoop of sand. And this would not be a soil mix if we do not mix them, so let's go do that. And as a final step to my seed propagation mix, I'm going to prepare a few scoops full of uh, really fine sand. It will not go into this existing mix. It's just merely a topping, a top dressing for the soil. Because fine sand would be very easy for Echeveria seeds to push out. And I'm going to apply a thin layer of it anyway. And in order to do that, I'm going to use this sieve and just pass it through here. With my seed growing mix ready, I could now move on to the next step, which is to prepare my seed greenhouses. I have two greenhouses prepared, complete with seedling compartments. One of them is marked, the other isn't, and I'll have to fix that now. I'm using a simple 2D system with columns and rows, and I'm labeling them from A to F for the columns and 1 to 4 for the rows. With everything labeled, I can now move on to filling up the trays. What I'm thinking of doing is to fill up maybe one third of each cell with scoria just to fill it up. Another one third would be the soil mix and having done that, I'll be sowing the seeds on top of the soil and I'll sprinkle in some of this. With my seed growing attempt last year, I used a mix composed solely of my soil mix. I didn't add any fillers at the bottom. It was fine for a while but I found that I'm having lots of trouble keeping water at bay because what I do is I water them from the bottom using capillary action and the very fine 
particles in this mix allows water to keep seeping up. So I think having particles this fine all the way through means that apart from the obvious problem of them falling out of the holes, the draining holes, and while I do not want the whole mix to dry out quickly, I also want to prevent them from sitting on wet soil, on wet feet. This is just a not necessarily an improvement but a modification from my previous attempt just to see which method works. If it doesn't work, I'll try again next year. With the fillers in, I can now insert my soil mix. When filling in the soil mix, you would want the layer to be not too thick because if you have it too thick, then it means that you would need a lot more water for it to reach the seeds through capillary action. You'll also want to make sure to have them all level at the same height because that way it means that you, you would need the same water level to water all of them. Otherwise, if one is too deep or the others are too high, then that means that they would be watered differently. You would also want to tamp out the top just to make it more firm. You do not want it to be too loose. That way it won't shift around too much. And to make things level, I find that it's a lot easier if you just shake the whole tray. That seems to work. And as a final step, we're going to make use of the sand that we sifted here. We're going to lay it just sprinkle it on top of each cell because right now if you look closely at the cells the substrate or the soil mix that I'm using is still a bit too coarse at the top and you would want it to be a bit finer for when you sow the seeds in and that's how it pretty much works in nature because seeds just naturally fall in the ground and on the ground it's just mostly particles of sand and the top layer of the soil is usually just sand just sand blowing in on top of the soil so what we're trying to achieve here is to imitate that type of environment. Make sure to apply just a thin layer of the fine sand. You do not want it to be too thick because the seeds would be staying on that part of the soil and the sand would not be holding enough water for them. Because after all, they are still seeds. They require the moisture. So we need a bit of retention there. So we have two trays, which means I can do two sets of experiments. And what I'm thinking is I'll be using one of these trays to just sow the seeds of already fertilized flowers while the other tray would be reserved for echeverias that I would be pollinating, hand pollinating myself. Each tray has 24 cells which means that I could have up to 24 different varieties. The problem is I need to see which plants are ready so I might not actually be sowing 24 different types. It all depends on what we have right now. I'm now ready to move to harvesting the seeds and sowing them so I must remove my make space and remove all of my soil mix paraphernalia. So here's my harvesting kit. I've got a sieve because I would be using this to separate the seeds from the chaff. I've got this white paper because it's a lot easier to see the seeds against white background. I've also found this laminated uh, white plywood just in case. And lastly, a separate lens for my macros. I'm just using an extension tube on an 85mm lens. So, that will do. I've also got pencil and paper ready. That way I could write down the cells, the corresponding cells, and the plant, the variety that I've added in each cell. Here's how a fertilized flower looks like up close. If you look closely at each flower, they are at different stages of development. Further up the stem, you could see older flowers that have already been fertilized. And if you go down to the tips, you would see the younger flowers which haven't been pollinated yet. Going further back up the stem, you would see that they are starting to dry out or at least the covers are drying out. If you look closely at the ovules or the ovaries, they are all bulging which means that this is a successful pollination and it has already started producing seeds. I already peeled back the sepals which cover the ovules. And you'll clearly see that the ovules are still green. This tells me that this is not yet ripe enough. But personally, I'm not sure when the optimal time to harvest is yet. And this is something that I want to figure out and something I want to experiment with. Now going back to this wider view, as you can see, it is clearly really tiny. And in reference to my finger, the seeds are really tiny. Here's the flowers right next to it. If you compare against the size of the flowers, it only makes sense that the seeds would be this small. Now the growing strategies of Echeveras is to make as many seeds as they can possibly make and just hope for the best. It's a game of quantity versus quality of seeds. You'll also notice that I picked from this part. This is by no stretch the oldest of the flowers. There are a couple of older flowers here which I haven't touched. 
This is a younger flower whose ovules, whose ovaries are still a bit juicy. The seeds are still sticky and this is not what I usually harvest. But this experiment is for me to figure out how ripe is ripe. So this would be at the early end of the spectrum, a bit, um, a bit raw. And I'll be, over the course of the next few days or weeks, depending on how fast uh, this seeds progress, I'm going to harvest more from this stock. I'm going to reserve one column for this experiment, so I'll be sowing this at cell A1. Now, what sort of details should you write in down in your notes? In my case, I'm adding the plant, the plant name where I gathered the seeds from. It is a Romeo. I'm not sure what it is pollinated with, so I'm just going to write a cross and X. It's a Romeo cross. I've also written down the cell which the seeds would be sowed in, which is cell A1. And finally, I have to write down the date today, which is the 6th of October, 2.38 p.m. So harvested and sown. 6 October 2.38 p.m. And as additional notes, I'm just going to note here that ovule is young, seeds are a bit sticky and wet. In this phase, you will want to capture as much data as you can because it's a lot better to have more information than you need than not to have it. In my case, it's overkill because I've written them down. I've documented them in this video. I've, meant, I've orally, I've verbally expressed them. So there's lots of redundancies there, which makes it perfect for me because in case I lose this copy, I still have the video. And I don't think YouTube would be deleting this video anytime soon. Alright, so now that we've got the seeds harvested, it's time to sow them into the cell. Now that the seeds are in, I'm going to sprinkle the top with some fine sand. Make sure not to add too much. Because we are mimicking nature, there's not much cover of sand on top. And just like that, we're done with harvesting and sowing the seeds. There's lots of other cells to fill and I'm going to look around the garden and see what else I could harvest. I won't be showing you all the gritty details, so let's do a montage. Give me some directions to get to you, to get to you Ain't gonna waste my time I know that we got connection, I think about you You're on my mind, on my mind, on my mind, yeah I'm done sowing seeds in all 24 cells and I have the notes for them And this next step is watering this tray from below And for that I would need Maybe a hose or a watering can. I'm watering it from below so I do not end up disturbing the seeds. So to do that, I'm going to gently lift one corner. And do it like so. I'm not sure if that's enough, so I'll add more. satisfied with this I'm still waiting to see if there's enough water because they should be rising now due to capillary action I'm not seeing any of them getting wet though so I might have to add more I find that it's a lot easier if I add more water than I need, then drain it rather than not adding enough. So, yep, I can see that it's getting wet now. Let me show you. 
I'm giving them a couple of minutes to soak up the water and after that I'll be draining. I think it's been a minute now so yeah let's go drain. Now that it's hydrated, I'm going to cover this and I'm going to keep this covered until sprouts have come out. In the next installment of this propagation series, I'm going to show you how I would pollinate my own plants. I haven't included that in this episode because I'm still waiting for some flowers to open and bloom. I'm hoping to pollinate certain plants of mine and I think it will take a few more days if not a week before the rest of them bloom. So for now, I'm doing my best to prevent them from being pollinated and Part of it is keeping them in wraps. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters such as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram, that's at SeriscaPage, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEchevaria. So I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!